So let's get started. Uh, welcome to Barn Raiser and Food and Cities Mastering Crowdfunding, What to Expect When You're Barn Raising Your Food Business. My name is Gina Jarmo, and I am the Community and Campaign Success Manager here at Barn Raiser. And it is a pleasure to be here today and join the Food and City community and would love um, to pass it over to Food and City to give it a little introduction. Um, about our partnership and um, their incredible work. Thank you so much, Gina. This is Jen Heiler. Unfortunately, Robin Metcalf um, is unable to be with us today, but I'm the program director at Food and City, and we're so excited for you to join us and our partners, Barn Raiser. We are a non on nonprofit, if you guys don't know about us, focusing on the global food supply chain. And there will be more information at the end about how you guys can join our community, but we're really excited to, you know, be here today to learn more about crowdfunding and a little bit of a deeper dive in this round two of webinars uh, that we're doing with Barn Razor. So, punting it back to Gina. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Jen. Um, so, if you heard correctly, this is the second round. How lucky are we to be doing part two, Food and City? Um, so, we will be diving into what really is uh, the measure, what are the measures of success to a successful campaign. Um, before we do that, though, a little background about myself. Again, my name is Gina Jarmo, and I am the Community and Campaign Success Manager at Barn Raiser. And a little background about me, I was raised in Northern California, so I'm lucky to have grown up knowing the people who, who grow and, and, and produce my food, and that sustained a lifelong passion for supporting food innovators and farmers. Uh, I have a background in nutrition education and procurement, and most recently worked with the Good Food Awards, another partner of ours who celebrates um, good food producers from across the country. Uh, I work closely at Barn Raiser with our campaign creators to optimize their fundraising and marketing potential throughout their crowdfunding experience. So a little background about Barn Raiser, those of you who've joined us uh, for webinar one, this might be a little bit of review for you, but um, still wanted to welcome those that are that are new here. Uh, Barn Raiser is a crowdfunding and social community dedicated to powering the good food movement by supporting food innovators changing how we farm, eat, and live. We officially launched in September of 2014, and since then we've had projects from all regions of the United States. And Barn Raiser really serves as a community uh, beyond crowdfunding and is 41 million Americans strong uh, for people that identify with good food and healthy living. So that holds space for trusted voices in, in food to offer advice and share their stories. And we, to foreshadow, we recently released a really exciting new addition to the Barn Raiser community that I will introduce towards the end. So sit tight. I'm so excited to introduce um, this new feature that we have. So Barn Raiser connects you, the user, the innovator, to a wider audience of good food supporters. Your project won't be one of 50,000 on a site with an unfocused community. And because our audience is so focused and connected, our 66% success rate is over double that of other crowdfunding platforms, food-related projects, and directly relates to the high level of attention and support from the Barn Raiser team throughout your campaign experience. Campaigns uh, that raise between five and $10,000 have an even higher success rate of 83%. And Barn Raiser was founded by food people for food people. So you'll receive personal advice from a team with years of experience in the good food and farming world. You're guaranteed strong homepage placement and social media support. And we act as advisors, editors, and we like to say cheerleaders. We're really on your team. With that, I'd love to ask a question um, out to you folks and see how familiar familiar you are uh, with the platform so I can gauge how to move forward. So what is your level of familiarity with crowdfunding? Never heard of it? Heard of it, but don't know much about it. I know somebody who's crowdfunded or I've supported a campaign or I'm an expert. I've read about it or have launched my own campaign. Uh, so keeping the, cool, the poll open for another 30 seconds or so. All right. 
so we have we have some experts really excited that that you're here this might be a little bit of review for the background side of things but really excited to dive into our favorite tools for successful campaigns um, really nice nice spread um, you're in the right place <laughs> So before we dive into the specific tools to help really blow your campaign out of the water while it's live, for you experts and those familiar uh, folks out in the audience, I am going to run through a few key strategies to set yourself up for your campaign before it launches. So again, this might be a little bit of review, but what a great opportunity to take a moment to drive that foundation home, right? This is Kitchen Witch Bone Broth. And they raised $19,000 to increase production for a newly acquired account with Whole Foods. And they raised the funding that they needed for growth and utilized their campaign as a platform to tell the story of their company, the incredible health benefits of the bone broth they make, and really found a way to share how they're re using bones from meat farms and other specifics of their business that you wouldn't otherwise know from picking up their jars off the shelf. So their campaign not only spread awareness and raised money for their bone broth business, but gave, that, gave them the opportunity to get their product directly into the hands of people. So it's really important, and we find a really great exercise, actually, to craft your campaign page by distilling your story down to passion points a few paragraphs or less to share the background of your business and the enthusiasm and commitment behind it, your big picture, how you'll impact your community, and what you need to make it happen. You'll find that your community is there to get behind your business, but really they're there for you and want to know about the people and passion behind the curtain. Which brings us to another key aspect of Kitchen Witch Bone Broth's success. They took the time to find and activate their community. We know that this is called crowdfunding, but that word crowd often feels big. So we've started to refer to it as community funding since the most impactful contributions and dollars come from people you know. On all crowdfunding platforms across the board, an average of 70% of the funding you receive may come from your network and their friends, and the other 20 to 30% may come from outside your community and the growing barn raiser network. So it's important to find your audience before and during your campaign. And your audience or, or community is anyone you know, your friends, your family, restaurants, business partners, other producers, and everyone who you think would be interested in supporting your business. So make sure you're capturing their emails by adding a newsletter sign-up box to your website or anywhere you're face-to-face -face with the community and get 10 people, your biggest fans, your family members, your best friends to pledge on day one. It's way easier to get your closest connections to support you early on than to bug them on week two or three that they haven't pledged yet. And it's money in the tip jar for when you launch. So once you have that list together, and have a solid list of names, it's the perfect opportunity to take a moment to set that right goal. Another important piece of the crowdfunding puzzle. Barnraiser operates on what we call a tilt model. So you organize your campaign by setting two goals. The first, your tilt goal, is the amount that you must reach by the end of your campaign in order to receive funding. And the second, your stretch goal, that ideal amount of money you need to fund your dream. The really fun part is that once you reach that initial tilt goal, the sky's the limit for how much you can raise even after you surpass the stretch goal you set. So set your tilt at a number that feels really attainable so that you can take the rest of your campaign to celebrate with your community and use that positive energy to rally them around getting, getting um, you to your stretch. As you may have guessed, this worked really well for Kitchen Witch Bone Broth. They were a relatively new business at the time and had a smaller network to choose from, so they went to their friends, family, and current supporters and ended up actually really tapping in and reaching into the CrossFit community in Santa Cruz. CrossFit is kind of a mega circuit training, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and they were a group that was a huge fan of the regenerative properties of, the, of bone broth and used it often after their workouts. And because they set that right goal at $15,000 and ended up raising 19, their campaign also significantly expanded their communities and opportunities because they had a successful campaign to showcase and, and prove their audience and model. 
Before their campaign, actually, they initially approached Slow Money for a loan and were turned down because they were still a little bit too small. So they came to Barnraiser, raised $19,000, and were able to circle back with Slow Money a few months later and secured a $50,000 grant. Slow Money, if you are um, unfamiliar, is an is a, a equity-based um, investor group. So keep in mind that the exposure your successful campaign is generating will be fruitful long after it ends and may catalyze new business and funding opportunities later. So another reason to take steps to make sure you tilt. A really great tool to set that initial goal is to take 5 to 10% of your mailing list. This includes people or partners willing to share theirs with you or send out a message on your behalf to their networks and multiply that number by 75. That ends up being the average contribution that we see. So for example, if your mailing list is 2,000 people strong, you take 2,000, multiply it by 0.05, just to be conservative, and you get 100, which ends up which multiplied by 75 is $7,500. So your tilt goal may be most comfortable if you set it around $7,500. Note that Barnraiser takes a 5% fee off of all successful campaigns. If you don't reach your goal, we don't take any fee. And there's also a 3 to 5% separate credit card processing fee. So if you raise $7,500, you'll receive around $600 uh, or $6,750 uh, directly into your bank account. Another important way to set your campaign up for success is to give great rewards. An average of 20 to 30% of your community may contribute a straight donation to your campaign, but the other 70 to 80% are excited about supporting you and want to receive something for your business in return as a thank you. So this is a huge opportunity for you to tap into your expertise. We recommend offering five to seven rewards with price points that reflect your entire community's ability to give. So smaller, more affordable rewards and a few special extravagant ones like an exclusive dinner, class, or event. We like to say that there are four ways to give. Thanks, swag, recognition, or experience. So a thanks can be a shout out on social media, an email, or a handwritten note. This is regrained, and they make energy bars out of spent beer grain, and they raised over $30,000. And one of their rewards was just a simple social media shout out, and they sold 17 of those, so that was $170 out of their raise. Swag, t-shirts, stickers, and tote bags are always hot commodities, but I have a feeling since you're a food business, you're selling a product. So this is a huge opportunity to pre-sell your products and get them into the hands of people. One of Kitchen Witch Bone Broth's most impactful rewards was a year's worth of bone broth delivered. And that was really considerable savings, but since they were pre-selling their product, it enabled them to get that money in advance in order to purchase equipment. And they sold five of those. So that's $10,000 out of the 19,000 they collected, just about half their raise. So you could have a standalone t-shirt or you know, your product as one reward and then fill a branded tote bag with treats from your business or as another example. Recognition can be a name on a site or a donor wall, naming rights or a sponsorship. Experience uh, can be a special tour of your business, a class, consulting, or a restaurant meal. And make sure your rewards are easy to fulfill. So again, utilizing your expertise and potential reward donations from partnerships and other businesses and factor in shipping costs into your price. So with that, let's jump into the meat of our webinar today. We'll dive into what to expect through each phase of your campaign and how to drive your outreach efforts through specific email and social media strategies. You'll find that it's all about consistency and committing yourself to promoting your campaign and reminding your audience throughout that they have finite time to help you towards your goal. You'll find that your audience is on board and want to be there for you. It's just that they need a reminder when their credit card happens to be right next to them. So take a few it may take a few pokes to get them at that opportune moment. We organize your, um, your campaign into four phases. You'll find these sections in your dashboard complete with a nifty checklist of to-dos each day. So your dashboard tools will become your best friend and, of course, will be good friends too. 
First phase of your campaign is pre-launch, which is generally about a month of prep, but can be more or less depending on your needs, which we um, peaked into uh, just a second ago. We'll be talking about week one uh, and what to do there. The gulch. And the final push with a sneak peek of the activities you'll see in your dashboard and what we'll dive into next. And Jen, if you're still with us, if you mind uh, pushing up, pushing yourself on mute, um, I can hear a little click, clickety clack. <laughs> Thanks so much. So week one, week one is where all of your pre-launch connections come together. And it's essential to hit the ground running with consistent outreach and promotion. You'll start to notice a rinse and repeat type pattern as we move through, I promise. On the first day, it is time for you to yell from the rooftops on your business and personal social media pages like Facebook and Twitter and ensuring those first 10 backers and any partners who've committed to both promoting your campaign and pledging on day one have been notified to do just that. Of course, whenever you're communicating with your audience, always encourage them to pledge and share. So your launch day alerts include your first ask email to your mailing list in addition to social media posts, which we'll go into in a second. We'll go into in a second. For your ask email, we have samples that you can use in your dashboard. It's even an even more distilled who, what, why of your campaign. And we recommend including three links to your campaign in the body of your message. One at the top, one in the middle, and one at the end to give people multiple chances to contribute as they read. As far as outreach, we find that email is the best way to get people to pledge over social media. So we recommend sending out at least four or more ask emails over the course of your campaign. Again, there are samples in your dashboard to choose from if you need some inspiration to really optimize participation. Once you've collected a few contributions and are starting to see all of your supporters as backers, it's time to start sending out your first two updates. Updates are sent directly from your BarnRaiser campaign dashboard, and these are messages sent out directly to your backers, the people who've jumped on your bandwagon and are officially invested in your campaign. So they want to hear from you, and it's important to consistently reach out to them to thank them for their contribution, celebrate your success, and encourage them to spread the word. We often see spikes in contributions right after a campaign has sent out an update or an email. So again, consistency is key. Updates can be super short and sweet. A simple thank you, picture of your business or your percentage raised. And we recommend sending out at least one per week like Chicken Bridge Bakery did pictured here. Though the more the better, of course. We've had campaigns send upwards of 15, which is above and beyond, but it's a more of a hey thanks poke than a letter, and why not say hey thanks? And then you've got your daily outreach. As mentioned, while email is key and absolutely queen to your fundraising success, social media promotion is an incredible asset if you commit to promoting your campaign consistently. Again, if you commit to promoting your campaign consistently. So you're not tethered to your computer and phone for the duration of your campaign, though you'll probably get excited about checking your fundraising status all the time. Let me whip out my first social media tool to make posting easy, Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a nifty tool that lets you post on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media accounts together in one place instead of bouncing all around between websites and different accounts. So from one page, you can schedule, yes, schedule a post from your business's Twitter account, your personal Facebook account, and your business's Twitter account at different times or all at once. You post what you'd like to say, check what account it should be coming from, hit schedule, and you're there. If you really wanted to, you could sit on down and schedule all of your posts for the entirety of your campaign on day one, week by week or, or daily. That works too really whatever works best for you. We recommend posting from social media at least one time a day. Two um, is ideal to really see results. So this makes it easy. And you can get back to, to working and, and, and making you know your delicious food while your social promotion is flowing. 
Hootsuite is completely free to link three accounts and schedule posts. And if you want to link more than three, it's $8.99 a month. But if you can be strategic and sign up for your 30-day trial around your launch, um, it's free. <laughs> okay, so before we move into the gulch, I got to sneak in a pre-launch extra credit for you overachievers out there. And just so you know, everything that we mentioned today will be sent to you in an email. So you can sit back and relax and not desperately take notes if that's what you're up to. Um, so sneak peek time. As you may have noticed, funding success directly relates to visibility. So what if everyone you know shared your campaign all at once at the same time. No, you didn't. You don't need to learn mind control. You just need to look into using a fun tool called Thunderclap. A quick rundown of how this works. After setting up a free Thunderclap account, you rate a Facebook or Twitter post that you'd like a friend to share. Something like, hey, you know, help my friends at Kitchen Witch Bone Broth, um, you know, increase their production. Click here to support and check out their rewards. Then, you set the number of people you need to launch, what's essentially an online flash mob. You send out the link with your pre-launch emails, encourage people to sign up to support you, and on the date that you've selected, your launch day, everyone who signed up with the link will have the message you posted appear on their social media accounts. How's that for exposure? This is also another way to get one of your biggest supporters on your team, um, even before you go live. So with that, I'd love to just do a quick check-in poll. How's the pace? Is it much too slow? Am I talking a mile a minute? Just want to make sure everyone's on board and um, having, a, having a good time listening. All right, a little Goldilocksy, some a bit too slow, some about right, and some a bit too fast. So I'll I'll try to work with that. Um, get a little slower and faster in, in some places. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. <laughs> All right, moving on to the Gulch. I know it sounds a little ominous. It's not as scary as it sounds. I promise. It just tends to be a time between that launch energy and finish line ramp up, where some campaigns see a lull in contributions. So the Gulch is an incredible opportunity to explore ways to spice up your campaign message and keep momentum. So again, continue to celebrate your progress via email. You're sending your second or third ask letter during this week, your third or fourth update, and you've sent out at least. 15 or more social media posts. And this is where people tend to feel like they're running thing, running out of things to say on Facebook and Twitter. Contrary to popular, popular belief, no one's going to see your Facebook or Twitter pages and reading through your feed. So, <coughs> pardon me, no one will notice if you send the same message multiple times, I promise. They're reading through their feed, not yours. To add variety, though, and really have fun with it, we like to say that there are four way basic ways to post, just like there are four ways to give. Reward feature, where you spotlight one of your perks. A shameless plug, just to support my campaign post. A countdown to the finish line, or a percentage raised celebration. If your business only uses Facebook, or if Hootsuite doesn't sound like your style, Facebook has two really great promotional tools to use. You can also schedule your posts directly into Facebook with, face, with the Facebook scheduling tool. You will get links, again, to all of the tools we mentioned, by the way, so you can sit back and relax. Another great one is Facebook's boosted post, post feature. Facebook has this interesting algorithm where normal posts are shown only to a specific group of Facebook followers each time. So if you post a status normally, <coughs> pardon me, so if you post a status normally, this isn't going to be um, as many pe <coughs> people as you think. Pardon me, one second. <coughs> Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Um, so again, if you just normally post, um, post on Facebook, um, it's not going to get to your entire audience. <coughs> and it won't get to as many people as you think because it's an algorithm and it'll only showcase it to certain people. So 
to make sure all of your followers see your campaign posts, that visibility thing again. <coughs> <Whew. laughs> it's a live webinar, guys. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, so to make sure that all of your followers see your campaign posts again, again, it's that visibility that you want, I recommend paying a few dollars to boost your post. And this ensures that each post you have boosted is showcased to all of your Facebook followers. And you don't have to break the bank here and can spend less than $15 a week for all or some of your daily posts uh, to amplify your reach. Asking friends to commit to sharing your posts is also a great way to increase visibility without using, you know, thunderclap or Facebook boost. Another way to shake things up is to add in a backer challenge and launch a referral program to really uh, keep up that excitement and attention. And this is what we like to call a referral program. <clears throat> and you can unveil the challenge through an update in your ask letter and on social media and incentivize that your community share your campaign with a certain number, number of people. You set the parameters in exchange for an extra special reward. This worked really well for My Mom's Mole. They raised just over $9,500 to increase their production capacity and start community cooking classes. And they offered a gift basket with their mole and other local producers. For every backer, they shared their campaign and got at least five people to contribute $50 or more. They sent them a gift basket. <clears throat> you can track people that use the referral link in your dashboard to figure out who wins and have yet another excuse to send out a personal note or update to the winners. And then continue your outreach. You're on the rinse repeat cycle. Consistency again is really key here. So check in with partners or specific people who haven't contributed or spread the word yet and remind them that you're getting close to the finish line. Again, email is key and we've had many campaigns note that the more personal the better. One wonderful tool to personalize your message with someone's first name for instance and send out hundreds of emails all in one click is an add-on uh, to, your, to your mail service called Yet Another Mail Merge. It's free to download. You basically upload the first name and email of your contacts in separate columns, link to the email message you'd like to, like to send, and Yet Another Mail Merge sends out a personalized version one by one. Their easy to use walkthrough video is two minutes or less, and you can send out up to 100 notes for free. It also shows you who's opened your message, and you can choose to resend it to those who may not have seen it, or can change even change your subject line to increase the chances of getting it open. This one's one of my favorites. Uh, you can also choose to spend $24 for a year membership and be able to send 1,500 emails a day. Tools like MailChimp and Emma are also great to send out big batches of outreach to different groups of people. Moving on to the final push, this is the last week of your campaign and the time to kick celebration and urgency into high gear. Again, another opportunity to start a campaign countdown to really generate excitement. And in this last week, everything should be ramped up. This is Republic of Jam and Willamette Valley Cookspace, and they raised just over $13,000 so owner Lynette could pass on Republic of Jam to her son and launch a commissary kitchen to support other makers. They really mastered this phase of their campaign and through their persistence and humor, ended up raising 40% of their funding goal in this last week. They picked up the phone throughout their campaign and were making calls daily to encourage their community to help them tilt by contributing and spreading the word. And they became update machines and showcased their rewards in their final ask emails and updates. They sent four updates in this home stretch in this, in this last week and expressed the confidence they had that their fans would help get them to their goal. Another great example to look at is the Chow Brothers Pickle Company, and they sent out one of our favorite ask letters of all time, where they outlined it all, or they outlined all of the excuses for forgetting to contribute they'd heard so far, and provided answers. One of them was a response to friends telling them that they keep forgetting, and it went like this. I have to read it. We understand and appreciate if you can't support us at this time, but if you are sincere and in serious need of a reminder, we are willing to provide the following services. Text and email every day. Call you at work with an awesome motivational quote. 
to help you remember. Send carrier pigeon, smoke signals, singing telegram, etc. And then the fourth bullet was click here. So of the five reasons, there were five links clicking to that campaign. And they had fun with it. It's a way to show your personality and, and, and your passion for your business again. <clears throat> you can also enhance the sense of urgency. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also enhance the sense of urgency by launching a countdown on social media and increasing your posts to three times per day to increase exposure and report campaign developments in real time. Republic of Jam, uh, again, here had really uh, wonderful fun with it. Those links you see in the posts are a video of Kermit the Frog screaming yay and had to pull this one out. A kitten on a hang glider coming in for a landing. <laughs> so this is yet another chance to have fun with it and get people excited about jumping into your bandwagon and being part of your success. Rotating basic posts three times a day and sticking with simple messages works just as well, though it's always fun to lighten it up when you can. Just a quick check-in if everyone wants to make sure that they're on mute, because I'm hearing a little bit uh, clickety-clack. <clears throat> Moving into post-campaign, you made it. Uh, this is your time to sit back, take a deep breath, and give yourself a pat on the back. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that crowdfunding is a walk in the park. It takes per persistence and promotion to get people excited about supporting you, much like the journey of starting and promoting your business. Crowdfunding is asking people to join you, to participate in your business or organization in a really meaningful way, and gives you an opportunity to clarify your message and hone in on a, on a successful, or I'm sorry, hone in on an effective and participatory strategies to fund your business and pre-sell your product. So once you've run one successful campaign, you are essentially a next level marketing expert. This is a marketing and promotional tool beyond you know, just that fundraise. Many of our successful campaign creators note increased sales and audience size after their campaigns and often find that it can be used to secure new accounts, partnerships, and set themselves up for other funding opportunities. We like to call crowdfunding, again, like I mentioned, a promotional and marketing tool where you happen to get funding at the end. And you'll see those funds deposited into your account within seven to 10 business days after your campaign has finished. You will always have access to your dashboard, so feel free to continue sending updates through BarnRaiser to keep your backers in the loop around next steps. We met Regrained earlier, and they still send updates, even though they were successfully funded in December. Uh, they sent out an update recently showing new packaging and, and even a Happy New Year check-in. The coming months after your crowdfunding campaign will be when you start fulfilling the rewards selected by your backers. And you can find order and mailing information in the backers tab of your dashboard, where you can download a CSV with all of the details. Make sure to do your very best to have rewards delivered by the estimated month you've selected when you wrote them. But if you think that there might be a delay, again, communication is key. Your backers are very understanding as long as you give them a heads up via email or update. So collect your funds, seven to 10 business days, celebrate with backers. Uh, you can continue to reach out with them. Um, long after your campaign finishes, and fulfilling rewards. Again, uh, try to fulfill them by the date that you uh, selected, the estimated delivery date, but communication is key. So next steps, prepare your project. You just go to barnraiser.us and uh, there will be a, a spot for you to get started on your project. Uh, you simply fill out a modal uh, and get started from there. It'll take you right into your draft where you can start building your page. And you start building buzz. You know, you're gathering those emails, putting together your lists, telling everyone you know about your upcoming campaign, and all of the exciting plans you have in store. And lastly, getting funded. We've had a wonderful variety of successful barn raisers, and I will send you the links of those who we talked about today. Last but not least, I am thrilled and would love to in, uh, invite you to join both of our communities, Food and City and Barn Raiser. Um, but I'm thrilled to unveil a new feature of the Barn Raiser community, our first version of our new discovery tool for users to find and support incredible good food innovators and farmers from across the country beyond crowdfunding. This is another place for you to tell your story, showcase your work through photos, grow your audience, 
audience and will ultimately be a tool for you to communicate with other innovators and producers and sell your products. I invite you to join our growing tapestry of makers and you can add yourself. Um, I'm gonna send you the link. We'd also love to add you too. Um, and you can visit it now by going to barnraiser.us slash discover. Um, would also love to invite you to join um, the food and city community. Uh, feel free to reach out for more information by emailing info at foodandcity.org, checking out their Instagram at foodcityorg, uh, or following them, or Instagram and Twitter at foodcityorg, um, and checking them out at Food and City on Facebook. So with that, I would love to open it up to questions. If you see on the right, um, there are there is a question box, um, and I'm already seeing a few flowing in. From Phil Hacker, um, of the ten thousand they raised, how much went into shipping and cost of product for their reward? This is by Kitchen Witch Bone Broth. Uh, Kitchen Witch actually had an interesting experience with theirs. Again, this is the don't in that it is very important to estimate shipping costs. Um, so they were actually sending out glass in bone broth. So um, as you know, that's probably a little bit heavy. Uh, so they ended up... <clears throat> They ended up again, um, you know, marketing their product and getting it into the hands of people, um, and raised, I think, about eight thousand of the ten that they that they ended up raising of that of that bone broth, and and that was not as much as they wanted to, um, and 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 we they kicked themselves for it. Um, so uh, definitely do your research. Um, you know, you're getting your product into the hands of people and you want to be pre-selling and you also want to make sure that you're factoring in shipping costs. Um, you want, you know, again, you, you want to, you don't want to break even. Um, generally with rewards um, and, and your fundraising in general, if you price it right and you, you factor in those shipping costs, um, the straight fundraising will end up being two thirds of your total raise. Um, a third of that will be, you know, the cost of the rewards that you're sending out. Um, so again, that two thirds raise plus that one third for divvying out your rewards to come. <clears throat> From Kathy Moore, how long is the average campaign? That's a great question. Uh, generally, um, it's around 30 to 45 days. Um, so that is a really great amount of time um, and, and a long enough time for you to consistently reach out, you know, for more updates and emails. Um, but it's also a short enough period of time to really create that sense of urgency. Um, so people feel like they need to help you out um, before the end of your campaign. Um, that said, uh, you know, consistency for with communication is key. So if you want to do a longer or shorter campaign, uh, just be ready to commit to, you know, consistently reaching out. Um, you know, the 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 do is to continue to reach out, um, and the don't is to forget that you have a campaign at all and not tell people about it. So you got to make sure that you're getting in front of people throughout the duration of your campaign, regardless of the time. But that 30 to 45 days tends to be a sweet spot. So from Susan, have you ever found success with a start with a, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading, with a startup restaurant? So we actually um, have have a few restaurants in the works um, in our in our draft section right now. We have funded bakeries though, which you know is is the same as far as you know um, uh, selling products and having people in the space, so functioning as a restaurant. Um, and yeah, as with any food product or as with any food business, um, you know, great opportunity to get the word out. Again, um, this is a marketing and 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 social promotional 
uh, strategy to get uh, your product and your business in in front of people so that they know that you're opening. So um, pre-selling uh, dinners or, you know, a drink ticket or, um, you know, a, an opening event, um, you know, those are all ways to, to tap into your expertise um, and to welcome people into your restaurant. So having a la launch party and, and also raising money uh, throughout the campaign would be wonderful. And I'd love to brainstorm with you. Okay. And it sounds like Robin um, is uh, the director of Food Plus City has joined us. So um, I'd love to hold, um, hold space for her to make a quick introduction. We're so excited that you're here. Um, and then I'll move into a few more questions. Thank you so much. We're so excited about our partnership with you all. Um, makes a lot of sense for um, what what we're doing together. Um, we have been partnering one way or the other for at least a couple of years now um, and um, uh, it makes perfect sense for us to bring a barn raisers platform into our community because we are very actively encouraging food entrepreneurs here where we are in Austin, Texas and elsewhere and it's a wonderful um, alternative to all the other traditional ways I guess you're calling it not crowdfunding, but community funding, if I'm right now. Let's make sure I get that right. That's yeah, a great idea. it's called crowdfunding, but we feel like it's a community. Uh, so it definitely feels like a community funding platform, too. And we're very excited about this new discovery tool that you're announcing. I think it's, um, I mean, we all think at Food City that it makes total sense for you to be bringing all of those makers together. So we look forward to seeing how that unfolds and supporting it in any way. Um, that we can. We, we, t we support food entrepreneurs by telling stories about the food distribution space, getting all the ingredients they need and all the infrastructure in between the ingredients and the consumer. So we're really excited about telling those stories and um, engaging uh, food entrepreneurs through our Food Challenge Prize every year where we offer $50,000 in prize money. So we'll be announcing those submission dates later on in the season. So don't want to take too much time away from uh, those great questions that you're, get, that you're um, getting from your audience there, but just really wanted to confirm and um, shout out to you all for doing great work. Thank you. Likewise, I'm really looking forward to having all uh, Food and City community members uh, showcased on the wall um, and looking forward to, to hearing uh, more from, from you soon. Um, going into to one last question, John um, is wondering if we support farm tech. Um, as, as many of you may have noticed, if there are a few farmers on, um, we partnered with Food Plus City or Food and City today, excuse me, um, <clears throat> who supports uh, primarily food makers. Um, but Barn Razor in general does support anything food and farming related, so farm tech included. Um, John, just so you know, one of our uh, largest raises um, <clears throat> is the Green Bronx Machine, who did vertical farming um, for kids in the Bronx, New York. So um, we definitely support anything uh, really moving the needle forward on, on um, good food. <clears throat> Looks like um, that is about it. Uh, just because nobody asked it, and I'm really surprised, I have to pull it out of my pocket because you might be thinking about it after you drive in or dive into your draft. Um, is a video really important uh, for your campaign? We get that a lot, and you'll see that there's a little box for a video. Um, we find that really, again, uh, the most important part of your campaign is, I bet you you're thinking about it in your head, consistency with outreach. Uh, so um, if you're going to spend all of that month pre preparing for your campaign by creating a video, skip it. Um, it is fun and really great social media fodder to post a video and, and let people hear from right from your right from your mouth about your incredible business and, and your and see your team in action. Um, but don't break the bank. If you have a friend that's a videographer, um, you know, or, or, or can shoot it from your phone. Uh, one of my favorite videos uh, was was shot um, on a phone and it was uh, pictures uh, with with video uh, or I'm sorry with a voiceover really, really cheap and easy. Um, from PowerPoint. Um, so if you're going to do a video, uh, don't break the bank and 90 seconds or less is best. People tend to stop watching then. So again, it's your soapbox, it's your elevator pitch. Um, and we've had successful campaigns who haven't had a video and raised their, raised their funds um, just fine.
So one one last one from from Jordan, and then and then we'll sign off. Um, does Barn Razor support food and drink related businesses outside of the USA? That is a great question. Um, we do support all businesses all across the world. The if um, is that. Currently, uh, we can only support uh, campaigns that have a U.S. bank account. So if you're in Italy, if you're outside the U United States, if you're in France, if you're anywhere all over the world and have access to a U.S. bank account, um, then we're happy to support you um, and, and are looking to expand um, you know, worldwide. And, and I'll let you know, Jordan, um, if you don't currently have access to a U.S. bank account. Um, as far as pledging, anybody with a credit card all over the world can pledge to any campaign. <clears throat> Well, that's about it. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to close the question period at that time, but feel free to email me at gina at barnraiser.us. I will be sending out um, the information as, um, as, as well as a recording um, today, and feel free to check in with any questions. I'm uh, looking forward to checking in with everyone who joined us here today, um, and thank you again, uh, Food and City, for joining us. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful day, everyone.